Heroes Con 2022. How are we feeling today? I like that. I like that. That's good. That's good. All right. So I don't mean to be that guy, and we're just getting to know each other, but I've got a small favor to ask you. There is a panel taking place, I think, across the hall and then right next to us. I want to get so loud that they get jealous that they're not in this room with us. So I'm going to try that one more time, but let's keep that in mind, all right? Heroes Con 2022, how are we doing today? Thank you. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Look, it's, it's Friday. I'm not in front of my work computer. I'm here at Heroes Con celebrating the 40th anniversary. Like, I'm, I'm in a great mood, all right? So we're going to have a good time here, all right? So thank you, uh, first of all, for taking the time to show up in today's panel. I know there's a lot of great things going on at the convention floor, but uh, I'm happy to have you guys here, as well as I'm sure um, our esteemed guests share the same feeling. Now, but before I introduce them, I want to go and introduce myself to all of you. My name is Bodder Milligan. I am the host of the long-running comic book podcast, The Short Box. Um, we consider ourselves the best comic book podcast this side of the multiverse. And I say that with a money-back guarantee. If you don't like our podcast, I'll give you your money back. Luckily, the podcast is free, so it's a win-win for the both of us, all right? But jokes aside, if you enjoy uh, uh, entertaining and well-researched comic discussions and reviews or interviews of the best creators in the industry like the folks we'll have on uh, here shortly, check out the short box on your favorite podcast app when you get home. Uh, it mean a lot to me, all right? And you might hear this panel on the show next week. Um, so I advise and encourage you guys to take part in the Q&A that will happen at the end of it. Um, so if you have questions throughout it, save it. I'll give everyone a chance to ask any burning questions they got. Now, with that out of the way, today's panel is going to be a fun, laid-back conversation between two certified comic legends. I think between these two gentlemen, they've got at least, if not more, than 20 years of professional comic-making experience. Both of them have, you know, their own long list, or both of them each have their own long list of Eisner-nominated and winning bodies of work. They have amassed a loyal and, and very loud fan base, uh, rightfully so, right? We're talking about two of the best. Um, and I don't think there's any hyperbole to be found in saying that they are two of the best creators making comics today, and they're taking time out of their busy convention schedule to be here with us and speak and whatnot, so let's make them feel really welcome, all right? Here is Con 2022. Let's give a warm welcome to our panel today featuring Scotty Young. <laughs> and Jonathan Hickman. <laughs> it's always that ledge. That was about a scene right there. Almost tripped up the steps. <laughs> that would have been great. That was not intentional. That was, that was actually me almost busting my ass. That wasn't in practice. We didn't practice that one. Oh, hello. hello. You guys all coming out. Welcome to the world again. Gonna be back. Was there a Heroes Con last year? A smaller one? Uh, no. No, this is I it. I think right? this is the first one in the last two years, I believe. You guys are pumped to be back? Yeah. Yes! Is this, is, is this the first one you've done? For first sure? con? Yeah. No, no, uh, but yes. Right? <laughs> no. Uh, I did a Wonder Con for. Um, I saw the pictures. You went to Disneyland. I went to Disneyland, yeah. I was, they were like, do you want to come out to Wonder Con? I was like, no, but yes. <laughs> My children want to go to Star Wars land. And Scotty, you're, a, you're pretty much a, a staple when it comes to HeroCon. I feel like every time I've been here, you know, you've, you've had a booth. And yes, I, I've been coming here for almost 20 years. I've only missed a few. Wow. Um, and I was telling uh, my friend Megan, who this is her first Heroes Con, who oh. uh, awesomely runs my company and is one of our best friends, uh, that this is a family. It, I, this is the only show that I go to where I feel like I'm coming home to family, whether it's the people who run it, own it, work it, the friends that I get to see, well, the people I get to see, <laughs> uh, even the fans. It's the first, it's really truly the first uh, convention where the fans that would come to the table sometimes would end up becoming friends and we'd start going to there. So it really is a family oriented show and I just well love said. it. And it's awesome for this to be my first big show back. What about you? Is this your first one? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been out of the house in two years. <laughs> I have a little bit of a panic attack. <laughs> Jonathan and I did a lot of Zooming. That's a lot true. of Zooming. That's true. 
Like uh, computer drinking. Yeah. <laughs> we called them meetings. Yeah. We just called them meetings. They're like, hey, how are you doing today, buddy? How are you <laughs> <laughs> We go well, until the meeting ends. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that leads me to my, to my first question here, because I, I, you know, I, I feel the love and energy coming between you two and, you know, from you guys. Uh, can you recall, like, what was your first time meeting each other? Or what was, like, your first, I guess, conscious exposure to each other's bodies of work or work? Man, I, it's so hard to remember now. It's so, here, wasn't it? Huh? I think it was here. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. Um, God, it, somebody was saying. Somebody came by the table today, and I said, oh, "I got a panel at. I got a panel later today." And they're like, "Oh, what's the panel?" I was like, "Ah, oh, it's just me and Jonathan Hickman just just talking." And then I came and he goes, "Just, just John, you and Jonathan." <laughs> and, and he was like, "You guys," and I was like, "Oh yeah, he's one of my best friends." And I, and when he he goes, "What?" And I realized like people don't realize that right when you start looking at like, and then I tried to think. I was like, "Yeah, we met." I just couldn't even remember it because it just feels it was, like it's it was, he, it was here. here. Right. It was here, and I had my first comic book out ever. So yes. it was 2007. Seven, yeah. And, and, um, yeah, it was. Like, I, I didn't even have a trade out yet. It was like the second issue of a book I did called Nightly News. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Scotty came up to the table, and he's like, hey, man, I really dig your work. And I was like, I was like... Thank you, Big Sexy. And, <laughs> and, and, and he was like, I'm Scotty Young. I was like, I know who you are. <laughs> you know? Um, and honestly, I think we have hung out at every single thing we've been together since then. That's it. Yeah, Jonathan and I, yeah, we did that. And we, we introduced each other. We, we met each other there. And then we instantly, the first time we got a break, we just walked around the show together buying art books. Because <laughs> Jonathan, uh, you know, he was like the first fellow pro that I met that has an equal love for just collecting art. And now I'm not talking about original art, just like finding new styles in art. So we just walked to every table and was like, oh shit. Basically like, okay, should we get this guy a job or be like, nah, let's tell him he's got a couple years left. And so he doesn't take our job. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you recall any of those artists that like that you were meeting at like young in their career? Like any names that come to mind? Oh yeah, uh, actually, again, heroes. These all come back to heroes. Uh, you'll remember this. I think we we all went out to dinner this night. Uh, 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 Two thousand. I can't remember the year. It doesn't matter. James Heron. Who who in here knows James Heron? Right, badass. Right, like one of the first years he. I think the first year yeah, he, he showed up. up out of nowhere. Yeah, he just showed up. I had seen his stuff online, but then when I met him, like I was, when I saw his stuff online, I was waiting to meet like a forty-year-old because he was a master. Uh, what I did meet was a twenty-five-year-old who was just like, "Hello," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man!" And he had all his artwork, and he had been doing these sketches. I was like, "Are you are you selling these?" He's like, "Yeah." Just quiet, really quiet guy. And I was like, "Well, I mean, like, how much?" He's like, "I don't know, like." Hundred and hundred each. I was like, oh yeah, hundred each. And I was like, <laughs> I just started taking. It. I was like, are you sure it's a hundred? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, Shh. got some more. And then later, I was like, man. And we were going to dinner on the train. I was like, you know, you fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was gonna buy them regardless. <laughs> but yeah, James Heron's definitely one of them. Trad Moore. Trad Moore hmm. is somebody that we that we fell in love with when he was. See, that's the beauty of this show. Well, this is a comic book show. Yeah, you know, unlike like all the Reed shows and stuff. Yeah, this like is that, a real one. Like this is this is just a comic book show, and so it's wall to wall. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So when you walk in Artist Alley and stuff like that, it's just people trying to get in and people yeah. who are in and Stuart Eminence sitting beside some guy that you've never heard of, but is amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and um. I I, do you know who I'm getting ready to meet in person today? Who's that? For the first time. I don't know. Have you? I don't know the answer to this question. I, well, that, I, that's what I was trying to get you to guess. Oh, Stuart who's Eminem? who's? Stuart uh, no, I met him a lot. He's he's grumpy. He is. <laughs> who 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 would I who would I flip out if I met in person? Even though I've texted him, talked on the phone. I don't have any idea. Chris Pacello. Hmm. Wait, you've never met Chris in? Not in real life, dude. I'm right. I'm sitting right beside him. Are you serious? Is he here already? I haven't been to my table yet. <laughs> Jonathan, everybody, he's here for you guys, the fans. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never met Chris either in it's person, like, right? It's like so high. I'm so I, excited. I know. We're where's Bangin at? Where you at? Bangin's back there on the plane. I'm just like scrolling through, and then I go, Oh my God, Chris Michelle is gonna be at Heroes, and she's like, What is 
what does that mean? Megan's not really, she's not familiar with like, oh, I was like, he's my favorite artist from high school. I, and I told her the story of when I was doing the Oz books. Uh, I did the Oz books. Anybody know what those books were? Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing the Oz books, I did a cover, and Chris uh, emailed me and was like, hey, do you have a few minutes? to hop on the phone, I had some questions about how you did this thing on this cover, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> So I went to the bathroom really quick. Just had a person, some personal time, no big deal. Uh, and then I called him, and I, I'm a pretty cool, calm, collected dude, but I was on the phone with him. He had to think I was on cocaine. <laughs> I was just like, huh, yep, no, no, then you just do this, and you dodge and burn it, and then you thing it, and then the layer, and then you think, right, what else do you want to know? Do you like grilled cheese? Do you want to come over? What are you doing right now? <laughs> But I've never, so I did text him from the plane, like, oh, are you coming to Heroes? And he's like, yeah, you know what, I'm just going to read the text. <laughs> That's how excited I am. Are you excited now that you're going to meet him? Yeah, but I would never text him. I want to be cool. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you this, but in a minute I'm going to make him tell you his Chris Claremont story. It's the best one. <laughs> uh, Hey, Scotty, how are you? Yes, Charlotte, this weekend. My one and only social goal is to finally meet you in person. Life goals. <laughs> <laughs> no! This is exactly how he gives notes on your script. <laughs> like, it's just like a, it's like a haiku, and it just, it, but, it, but it doesn't. Well, stop. I will say to see how many spaces he's yeah. correct. Yeah, it is a weird. Text. Every 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 single thought is double spaced. But let me like, but let me tell you this. This is a text, so you know, you know to get this much of a block, you have to literally hit enter. Do you know how many times he had to hit enter to get a six inch space between? He also he signed his text. I texted you. <laughs> I, Proof. That's why I love him. Jonathan, what, when, can you recall a moment where maybe, like, uh, you know, you geeked out about meeting, like, one of your comic idols or legends or another fellow creator at a convention? Have you ever had, like, one of those fanned out, fan out moments? I kind of embarrassed myself with Ben, uh, with Frank. Quattro. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I mean, that was... I did, I, too. Yeah, but, I mean, that's, like... Of course, you, but he's so nice. He is he's so nice. So it's nice. like not weird. It's just kind of like, let's just get past this and get to the real you. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. one of those things, you know? but uh, I, I think I kind of, I kind of, I was really excited to meet him because he's just so good. <laughs> um, everybody else that I've really, really wanted to meet, you know, wasn't that awesome. Um, yeah. No, like, 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 you love Mike Mignola, but you meet Mike Mignola, and it's just Mike Mignola. Yeah. Right? He's just a normal human it's being. Like, yeah, yeah, right? cool, yeah, yeah, you like me. I'll Everybody you likes me. I just, uh, you like me. Exactly. I'll tell you a story. Uh, I met Jeff Darrow for the hmm. first time, and I was with Brian Michael Bendis, and we had been at a. Um, Brian Michael Bendis is a comic book writer. In North America. <laughs> um, and um, and we had we had been at like Stewarding had a had a Stewarding yeah. is a art book dealer yeah. who has Jonathan and I have books. spent our Too wives hate us uh, a little bit for how much money we spend at Stewarding uh, more than I spent on my wife's wedding <laughs> <my> <laughs> yes have yes. I spent at Stewarding anyway um, so like fifty bucks um, <laughs> uh, Brian had bought this like really rare uh, French edition of something Jeff had done and he took it to Jeff to get him to sign it. It was the first time I had met him and he was like, hey, how are you guys doing? And he starts having a conversation with, with Brian and um, who cares what they were saying, right? Uh, it, was, it was just them talking about whatever they were talking about. But I watched as Jeff Darrow drew, he was signing the book. Brian was like, will you please, Mr. Darrow, will you please sign my book, right? Yeah. And I watched as Jeff Darrow drew a car flying through the clouds and he only picked his pencil up off the paper twice wow i was just sitting there and i was and, and he was talking to brian the whole time yeah. you know like you know it was um, and he's a, he's one of the guys that truly doesn't he doesn't comprehend or, or if he does he doesn't let on that how much we revere him hmm. yeah no he, i don't think he gets it yeah you if you meet jeff darrow it's really just like me you could just be meeting a guy at a diner yeah that's like i'm drawing on this now yeah, it's really, like, <laughs> truck, yeah, I'll just do this. So. Truck stop. Yeah, truck stop is yeah, and he's so humble and nice and just like, I just happened to do this. But insanely talented, and yeah. I sat there, and I was like, yeah. and then when they finished, Brian was like, Jonathan, aren't you going to say anything? And I was like, you just drew that fucking picture with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine was not as much in person as it was uh, years ago, and, and this is this show is, again, special for this because it was one of his... Uh, kind of staple shows, but Mike Baringo, hmm. for me, uh, you know, who, who has passed away years ago now, but when I was a very young cartoonist, a very 
felt very lost in in an industry that I, I I grew up reading comics in the '90s and early 2000s, where you know cartoony illustrative art was the thing. So that's of course I was like, yes, I can go and do this. And as soon as I broke in, they were like, well, we're kind of doing a Brian Hitch thing now. We kind of <laughs> want everything to look like a movie panel. So yeah, I don't know what to do with you anymore. And so it felt weird. And and a guy like Mike Moringo, who was a legend. You know, legendary runs on on uh, you know books of Fantastic, Fantastic Four and uh, with Flash and Impulse and these books with Mark Wade over these a legend in this industry. All of a sudden, w what I didn't realize at the time was also feeling that way. But similar to how Jonathan and I feel about art, he was an art lover and he did not care if you were a pro or somebody who just walked in the door yesterday. And one day my phone rang and it was Mike Moringo and I was at a place where I don't know that I knew a pro. Like, I don't know. I mean, I was a pro, technically. You know what I mean? You know that time where you first break in, but nobody knows you and you know nobody? So you're like, I don't know what I am here, you know? And Mike called me, and he was just like, I just want to, I got your phone number from, I think, Kari Randolph, and, and um, I just want to tell you, I just really love your stuff. It's got a great energy. And I was like, oh. thank you. And over the course of, you know, the next five years, you just became... Of such a good friend, but I could not believe that this guy, that comic, you know, I'd read Telos and all of his books, and all of a sudden he is on the phone. This is early internet days too. There's no FaceTime and shit like that. Right? So it costs for him to yeah, call. Yeah, it's you. literally like I got I got one of those like ridiculous truck driver situation. I look like I'm landing planes <laughs> at O'Hare. Like, <laughs> can you hear me, Mike? And uh, yeah, he just called, and we would talk about art, and we and this is again. This is one of our first kind of connections was, was the, our love of French albums and French comics. And back in the day, you couldn't find those. You had to go to Stuart Ng Books. And, and we would talk about these artists from France and, and, and all over Europe with, with Mike. And I just remember being like, I can't believe this is happening. This is my life right now. I'm just a, I'm 25. You know, I'm 25, I'm 26. I, might, I draw necks way too long and I don't notice it until they're in print. You know, like, shit like that. Until and, the and, um, and here this master of the craft is, is just being, literally being like, you want to be my friend? And I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to be your friend. So that was, he, he is the first person to me that, uh, if you want to like say be a mentor or whatever, but I, I didn't feel like he reached out to, to do that. He reached out because he was looking for, he was looking for someone who felt, he was looking for people, he was collecting his people that felt the same way hmm. about art. Um, and, and, and now that he's been, you know, we, we, he's been gone from us for so long. I, I remember when Rocket Raccoon, I, I wrote and drew Rocket Raccoon, and I mean, the first issue sold like 350,000 copies, and the first thing I wrote was, man, I want to tell Mike, I wish Mike was here, yeah. to tell him that a book about a, a talking animal and a tree just is the number one book hey. in comics. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, just, I wanted to be able to reach That's out to madness. Mike and tell him that. That's a beautiful story. And, and Scotty, I'm going I'm to stay on you uh, for this question, then I'm going to go to uh, Jonathan next, but... Um, you know, we, we spent a good amount of time talking about, you know, fellow creators, you know, peers and colleagues that, you know, you guys look up to. But I want to shift the attention to, uh, like, you know, meeting the fans, right? Like, yeah. and I think that's the beauty of coming to a convention like Heroes Con. I feel like you guys really get to meet the fans that, like, you know, take in and respect your, your work. Um, when, when you consider that, you know, you said that you've been coming to Heroes Con for the last 20 years. This one's the big 40th anniversary, which is amazing, right? What's a memorable like fan experience moment that you had, or an exchange with someone that you know, uh, with, with a fan or a collector? Is there one that like kind of comes to mind, or you know, you kind of keep? Oh, I mean, it, it, they happen all the time. I mean, again, a Heroes is great. We've got a couple here. These these are my homies. They have. Uh, they literally. If I need to know something about my career, I just email them. <laughs> They're the walking. The they have it, man. They know. Hey, what everything. book did I do in 2011 they, I again? Wanna, we've had a big conversation today because they got a checklist and they're keeping it secret. They won't give it to anybody. I told you I was going to put you on blast today, right? Uh, but they, they literally have, they, they are so supportive. And it's not just that, like, I, my Bojangles was, my breakfast this morning was from a <laughs> gift card that they gave me at the last show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, that's family. That feels like family. We that's have cool. uh, Elizabeth, Jimmy, they're probably not in here. They don't do panels. They're like, we know him too they're long They're too now. cool, man. They're like, we know him too long now. We're going to go into his panels, right? But I met them here. And it's a, there were a couple who, you know, my first sketch that I did of them was of them. And then the next year it was like, hey, draw all the crumbs that live in Jimmy's beard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, and you just, you just get to a place where it's not, I mean, I know it always, when you walk around, it looks like there's a line and there's a person on this side of the table and there's a bunch of people on this side of the table, but 
I don't know that we ever start feeling that that feels like I still mm -hmm. feel like I could easily like today I'm gonna easily be on the other side of the table like I'm not gonna wait in line I'm a big fucking deal but <laughs> but 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 I could be in line for Chris Bocello I'm not gonna be but I could be you know what I mean so I think it's it's a it, it, for me I'm still just a, a nerd who likes art and likes comics and likes movies. And so it's impossible for me to not to talk about this stuff when these people are in the line. So I don't, I don't view it as anything other than like, oh my, I mean, my wife doesn't like to talk about this nerdy shit, right? I got to talk about it with somebody. I'm like, hey, do you want to talk about what happened? And she's like, no. Do you want to watch uh, some murder shows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the same, right? With, Lori doesn't want to hear about this stuff, right? I don't think she's ever read. <laughs> you do comics? <laughs> oh, no. no. We joke all the time. We're like, I'll just be like, Casey, what's, uh, what's the last comic I did? Yeah. I, she, that's she's not like, true. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> My wife read the first thing that I did when that we were breaking in and we were super broke right. and trying yeah. to make it work and all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, she, she hasn't read. <laughs> she, she's like, I try. <laughs> now it's, it's it's not as bad of a burn as uh my uh my oldest son he uh he goes out of the way to tell me he's like he's like dad i was on um uh, marvel unlimited today reading a bunch of books and i was like i was like yeah what, what were you reading he was like he was like i i read some fantastic four by dan slot my favorite writer <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, I got a question for you, because uh, it was cool to hear, you know, your stories about you geeking out about meeting, you know, uh, like Jeff Darrow and being really impressed. And I know early on in your career, you know, you wore a few hats when it came to the comic making process. Uh, you know, you illustrated and wrote Nightly News and uh, Pax Romana. Um, and you've also got experience, uh, you know, in inking, lettering and coloring. I was curious, aside from from writing, which part of the comic making process is, is your favorite? Well, I like I don't lettering sucks. But um, well, that's it, if you are doing everything yourself, it's really tedious when you get to that point. Like mm. that's not a that's not a like lettering isn't fun. That's just a Jesus. I just want to be done. Right. right? Um, I like all of that better than the writing. Like I like all of that stuff better than writing. Um, that's it. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> it's like mic drop. That's it. Mic drop. Is that, I mean, I, you know, I, I write a bunch of stuff, but you know. There's a part of me, a little, little tear. I wish I was drawing all my I know. Own Jonathan, every year we talk about the book Jonathan's going to draw every year. Hmm. This is the year. And now I feel like I've been sucked into that side of the life. I feel like you should have warned me that once I jumped over, I would never go back. Because every year I'm the same way. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck. I think what I told you was write your own books. You did. Jonathan. But, but also draw them and keep all the money. Is what I told <laughs> That's you. true. Jonathan is solely. Not solely, but a big, big reason. Solely. Solely. <laughs> a big, big reason for me jumping over. Jonathan and I had talked for a very long time about doing a project together. Um, and one of probably the only people that I fully was going to commit to, a lot of my friends, writer friends, would be like, hey, want to draw something one day? I'm like, eh, you can't afford it. Scotty, Scotty would solicit pitches from all the best writers in comics and then tell them how terrible their pitches are. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I did that. I did do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, could you? I, I mean, I want to work with you, but maybe something better. Better. Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Jonathan and I, again, having such similar tastes in what we dig, uh, would be like, oh, check this shit out, or listen to this song, or look at this animated thing, and we'd we'd cook up a few things. But then we're just we're both busy dudes, and and one time we we were at a Marvel retreat, and he and I had the same car on the way back to the airport after the week, and and we were riding, and I was like, hey, do you think we're ever gonna? I was like, what do you think? Like, are we going to do the thing this year? What, what do you really think? And he goes, dude, this is exactly where she goes, listen, you don't need me. You're Mike Mignola, and you just don't know it yet. Hmm. That's exactly his exact words. And I was like, I do talk like that. There's got some monsters in there. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, after that, I got home, and I was like, he's right. And then I published I Hate Fairyland. And, now, and then that worked out. I did write and draw it, and I kept all the money, and it was great. Um, but also, <laughs> I was so tired. It's so much work. It is a lot of work. Uh, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I did 20 issues of I Hate Fairyland. And I was like, I'm going to take a break for a year. I'll just write a series with Jorge Corona. I'll write, you know, we wrote Middle West. Jorge was drawing it. I thought, I'll just take a breather for a year. I've been drawing, I've been drawing sequentials, interior pages for, at that point, like 17 years. Hmm. You know, 
I'm tired. So I'll just take a year break. That was four years ago. <laughs> and now I'm like the Jonathan who's like, I see all these badass artists just dunking on everyone. I'm like, I want to do that too. I just need to write 38 more scripts that I owe people. <laughs> exactly right. That's, and you always think like, man, if I just get to Monday. But you're like, what am I going to do Monday? Write the other 16 <laughs> scripts waiting for me? So, yeah. Scotty, whether it be like writing or, or drawing, do you have like a, a, a ritual when it comes to uh, getting like the creative juices flowing or getting like in the mood? Like do you have a go-to album or do you have like a movie that you like to play in the background to like kind of get in that mindset? Um, not real. I mean, writing, it's a little different. Nothing to get me in the mindset, but when I'm in it, like, you know, depending on what I'm writing, I have different playlists and it's always scores and you know yeah, you can't listen to stuff with words right no 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 no. it's all you know if i'm writing middle west i had some really cool you know good folky instrumental playlists or uh uh you know strange academy is a lot of everyone lies about this the answer is the gladiator soundtrack <laughs> so good mine is often the it's mad max soundtrack. fury road soundtrack yeah. mm. oh is, is it the is gladiator it's one it's the where he's touching the wheat yeah yeah Holy it's, it's, it's literally like four or five soundtracks that everybody listens <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mine is, I've written way too many books to the Mad Max Fury Road soundtrack, so when I get home on those days, Casey's like, you're just annoying, because it's just like, But, yeah, I, I will do music scores, but I'm also, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weirdly kind of rigid schedule person. Like, mm. I work... Eight, eight to five, like eight to four, like every day, like at four or five, like whatever's done is done. I don't care if it's due tomorrow. If it's not done, I'm just like, mm -hmm. that's it. My work day's done. Like, so I, I'm weird. I don't really like, I think when you do this and you have as many projects sometimes as we do, it's very difficult to just be like, wait for the muse or like develop a thing. It's like, I got to get to work and do it now because my kids, you know, the other day, my son Milo was like, the night before, he's like, hey, you want to come play Smash Brothers with me? I was like, I kind of don't. <laughs> but I promise I will tomorrow. Please forget. Please forget. Smash Brothers is like, it's, it's so... It, the game sucks. It's terrible. I was like, I will play, I will play fucking Tekken with you. To the, I will fucking Eddie Gordo you. Fucking yeah, no, I mean, dance fight you all day. But Smash Brothers sucks, son. Yeah. Uh, so you think he's going to forget? He does not forget. As soon as I walk in the door next day, he's like, Dad, did you forget? Super Smash Bros. I was like, I didn't. <laughs> Dad, this also, also, I'm going to tell you, this is a good story. Megan knows the story. We went on a vacation to, to Minnesota last week. Uh, nobody believes my son's memory is as awesome as it is. Uh, he said, what, in the book, we, the RBO book, it was like, hey, make sure that you save one morning to wake up early and see the sunrise. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool, cool. There's the sun. But my son Milo, he's six, almost seven, hears this. He goes, Megan. He likes Megan a lot. Megan, will you watch the sunrise with me tomorrow? And of course, everybody, whenever Milo's cute face asks you questions, they all go, ah, of course, you're a child. I will say yes. Never anybody, never, all of us don't intend to do it. Uh, 5.30 in the morning, because he looked on his iPad at what time the sun comes up. 5.30 in the morning, he rolls up at Megan and her husband's room. <laughs> Megan is in bed with her husband. I don't know how many clothes were on. Probably not enough for my son to be in there tapping her on the shoulder <laughs> at 5.30 going, Megan, do you remember about the son? <laughs> That's my son. Yeah, so I had to play Smash Brothers. Yeah, so I don't, I get to work and I'm like, am I inspired? Yes, no, but let's do it. Let's just get into it. And I think once you start breaking down that wall after time, you just, it, it, weirdly enough, it becomes a job as well, hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Dad, I picked Kirby for you to play. Do I? Oh, I was saying uh, his son and uh, Smash Brothers. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not done, if I don't get my two hours, five pages done by like one o'clock, the day's a disaster. <laughs> yep. Because yeah. everybody will start calling and emailing and, and right. meetings and that kind of right. stuff. It's just, it's impossible. So you got to get done early. Mm -hmm. And I don't. <laughs> and so I hate myself. And I go to bed angry. Then day. he texts me, what are you doing? My kid's like, you do want to play Super Smash Bros? I'm like, fuck you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even your real dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to um, shift gears here uh, from Smash Brothers to, to this topic right here. You guys were talking early on about how you guys would, uh, it sounded like walk through like Artist Alley, you know, visit different artists, you know, up and coming, and you guys got to meet uh, a few, you know, names that are predominant now. So 
I was curious with that in mind and how many, uh, you know, aspiring comic creators that come to conventions <coughs> like this, you know, if, if you guys were to give a piece of advice for aspiring comic creators, specifically something that you wish that someone would have told you when you first entered the industry, uh, what would that be? And John, if you don't mind, if you want to take that one first. <clears throat> don't have a social media. Don't have any social media. Write under a pen name. <laughs> disappear after 15 years <laughs> <laughs> right like that that would be like the best thing ever it sounds like a tarantino <laughs> that's, movie that's some print that's some print shit right there yeah. you, know, you know that one the, what, what, what was it the reunion reunion situation where prince is, comes out and he does a solo you guys know what i'm talking about the video where he's, he's like, a symbol and then when he gets out he just throws the guitar up in the air and then walks the hell off you're like what happened i get to, was there a dude up in the rafters that caught the guitar like that's, <laughs> that's what you should do with comics like exactly just right. print it throw it up <laughs> Uh, I'm not joking about the social media thing. It's amazing how many people are not productive because they waste time doing yeah. that. Um, yeah. Everybody falls into the trap. But um, <clears throat> one thing that Scotty and I absolutely agree on is the number of people. Everybody's talented. Everybody's talented in the industry, of course. Everybody's insanely talented, frankly. Um, everybody has stuff that they want to say, you know, and all of that kind of junk difference between people, the real difference between people who succeed and, and don't succeed are the guys that will work harder than everybody else. Yeah. And and one of the things that Scotty and I always talked about you know, years ago, I mean, we've probably been talking about it for a decade at this point, <laughs> which, is, which is everybody's really talented in here, but I'm going to outwork every single one of them. That's it. And, <clears throat> you know, be a pro. Like, that's that's the, the key to being a pro is to do yeah. pro things, not not try as hard as you can to not work. Yeah. You know, Every, I'm not joking. Like everybody's, good. if you're not talented, you're not going to make it. That's, right. That sucks, but that's true. Right. But, um, I can't think of anybody who I think is a like crazy success in the industry that doesn't work. Really no, totally hard. agree. I, I, I won't name names <clears throat> because also this, this person and I are actually very good friends now, but, but he's a real lazy piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You, when I was first breaking in, uh, I, I mean, I, I will be the first to admit that I was getting, I was getting things and getting books and getting press f before I, I felt that I should have been. But I also did not that I wasn't like, oh, please take it back. I was just like, you know, this is crazy, right? Fake it till you make it. Um, and of course, I was not near as good as X amount of people, nor will I ever be. And, and, and that's not a faux humble. I'm cocky as hell. So I'm just saying, like, these guys are really good because I'm amazing. Salt, salt of the earth. <laughs> but later, later on in life, I, w I went and I was hanging out with the, the certain person, and they said, man, I just got to say, like, it, it's, I'll, I have to admit to you that me and, and another person, we would, back in that day, would sit around, and every time we'd see something of yours, we'd say, like, how the fuck is he getting that? Like, how is he getting that? Like, based on how I draw and how they drew, how is he getting that? And they were mad, like, so mad. And they would, and he said, we would just stay up and we'd talk about it, and he just drove us crazy. And I was like, that's, and, and I just said back to him, I was like, that's awesome. Because at that same time, I had no idea who you were. And all I did was grind. So that's what I'm saying. Don't let, the thing is, you can't care about like what's going on, what's the new thing, what's everybody fighting about, who's good, who's not, who am I supposed to like, who am I not supposed to like. That was a great moment where they're, they spent more time talking about somebody who was getting things that they wanted or thought they deserved more so than me, and I was just getting it, not caring. And I also would have said, I can't believe that I'm getting it and they're not, right? Because, because they're better than me. But that, how does, that doesn't matter. It was just a matter of, I'm working, and I'm going to work harder, and I'm going to keep working harder because this is a crazy job that we get to do. Like, if you were to ever to tell me, like, when you grow up, you're going to play pretend for a living. <laughs> I mean, like, go fuck yourself. I don't, that's not a job. But I do. We get to sit around and go pew, 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 pew. What would he say? I don't know, Spider-Man. Let's do it in Spider-Man. <laughs> like, oh, cool. Give me my check. <laughs> it's crazy. So I'm going to work hard. That's, and not, that's not how I work at that's all. Exactly how, <laughs> that's exactly how he works. He's like, I'm Mr. Fantastic. Look at me. I'm stretchy. <laughs> I 
That's, That's great insight. I appreciate it. I got uh, one more question for you guys, and then we'll uh, pivot to Q and A. Which I will say, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask, um, if you guys want to form maybe a, a line here in the center, I can uh, come down there with the mic. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'll get to Q and A uh, right after this. But um, in closing, you know, I think it's really refreshing to see, you know, uh, the respect that both of you have for each other, and you know, like the sense of brotherhood that emits from both of you. I wanted to ask both of you, you know, when you think about the other person's, you know, career and accomplishments and what they've brought to comics, what are some words that come to mind when you think of the other person's, you know, uh, career? So, like, Scotty, when you think Jonathan Hickman and what he's uh, brought to comics, what are some of those words that, you know, come to mind? I'm going to be nice. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, I don't know how the fuck you got those gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when I said I wasn't going to name names, it was me talking about him. Like, I should have been fucking writing that stupid book. Oh, uh, foundation, look at my hexagons. They all go together. It's so designy. I'm just happy we've moved on from circles. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know what? I, the thing that I would say is Jonathan elevated. I think Jonathan has elevated this business, ele elevated um, our goals for storytelling. I think the way that his brain works and the way that he sees things um, it's just awesome. It's just, it's, it, you, you look at it and you're like, fuck. I mean, one of the first times, uh, early years and years ago, uh, my friend Drew, um, I was like, you know, it was kind of during that period of time where the conventions were becoming a little unwieldy for me to do alone. And I had realized it. And I was like, I don't think I can do them alone anymore. I need someone to help me. And I asked my friend Drew to come along. And Drew was like just a comic fan. That's it. He hadn't been a part of the industry. And, and, and Jonathan, and I said, hey, is it tonight we're probably going to, I think we're going to dinner with, uh, uh, Jonathan and uh, you know Matt Fraction and, and Kelly Sue DeConnick. And he's like, oh yeah, like just we're gonna do gonna do that. And when we, but Jonathan one night was like, I, I don't really want to go out. You just want to come up. I think soccer was on, right? Probably. Yeah. And you're like, I think I'm just gonna watch a game and, and order pizza. You guys just want to come up and hang out in the room. We're like, yeah. I was like, are you cool with that, Drew? He's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And we just and we went in. Jonathan has his windows open and dry erase marker all over his windows because he was just working. And like you said a minute ago, like you work hard, that's what you're, that's where you're getting. But he's elevating it. He's thinking about it. Like it's not just a person who's like, I got a job writing Spider-Man, so on Thursday I'll write 20 pages of Spider-Man. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it at the hotel while we're eating pizza. He's elevating not just that issue. He's elevating the craft hmm. and and raise putting a bar up there for for everyone to be like, well, shit, I got to. That's a bar I have to aim at now, which is I think. You know, you do have giants come along, and at the time, you don't know you're doing that until, I, I mean, listen, guys, I do the baby covers, so it, I have also been a part of this rising, <laughs> raising this bar. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he's funny. pretty fucking awesome, this guy. I couldn't agree more. That's well said. Jonathan, same Say some nice shit about me, Jonathan. Jesus. I think I've seen Scotty slip you a 20 underneath the table. At least sure. five nice words. This guy's like a 20. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um... What's well, tough? It's really tough for me to talk about Scotty and um, uh, separate the guy that's the the um, super successful, like super super successful artist, and uh, a guy who just is kind of like feels exactly the same way that I do about everything in the industry. Right. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why we we kind of Vulcan mind melded as much as we did is because we basically have. I mean, there are things we obviously disagree about. Uh, strongly, but like what we think comics should be and how we think this stuff should be done it is more paramount than anything between us. It's almost irrelevant how we feel about the work yeah. that each other does at this point. I don't even, I don't even think Scotty reads any of our books. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're dense, right? I mean, it's hard. I mean, they're... <laughs> guys try to read Black Monday I mean, Murders? It's like, really Is it Wednesday now? I don't know. Is it Tuesday Murders? I don't right. know. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, I think, I think, so outside of that, like that's how I think about Scotty all the time. Um, so, but outside of that, in terms of what he means to the industry, um, look, I think that there's an entire um, industry of, of how you can be a successful artist and not be a Marvel House style guy, whatever that Marvel House style is at the time. And, what Scotty has done that is the most important thing is that instead of looking at that as a, as a um, all the books look this way, and then we have this guy who looks 
whose stuff looks this way, right? Instead of that being, but he doesn't draw like them, it's Scotty has turned that into a, I draw like this and everybody else draws this way. That makes this so much more special. Um, and he turned it into a whole industry of covers and he turned it into, I mean, it, it's just, it's been really fascinating to watch just how more successful he is <laughs> than, than a lot of other artists that have what many people would consider more commercial Oh, 100%, yeah. And Scotty is doing books with Neil Gaiman. Mm. And, you know, all, all the kind of... Versatility. His shirts are, his shirts are everywhere. Mm. Marvel, Marvel has made more money off of Scotty than any writer that they have in the last 15 years. Like, it, it's, it's an industry unto itself, and it's based entirely on asymmetry. And I think that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate uh, that. Fantastic. So taking comics to another level and carving their own lane when it comes to comic books. Here's Con 2020. Let's give a round of applause to Scotty Young and Jonathan Hickman. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, shut up. All right. No, my, my, I, I, I do want to John is so mad you guys clapped I, No, so it long. cracks me up because, uh, because my favorite moment at a, at a con ever was it was a Marvel Architects panel. I don't know if you remember what that was. That was a big, like, bullshit kind of branding thing that we did for like five. For did like you see, five they had a really cool walking photo with all of it. It was exactly. amazing. Everybody wear black. Yeah, ACDC um, playing in the background. And so, um, and so they were introducing all of us. And they introduced Brian and Matt and Jason and Ed, and then they introduced me, and they cheered louder for me than they did for Ed. And Ed oh. looked at me, and he's like, "They cheered louder for you." They <laughs> 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 leaned over, and he's like, "This is fucked up." Yeah, I don't like this at all. <laughs> this is not the world I'm supposed to be. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, Ed. All right. So I turn it to you guys now. Does anyone have any it's questions so that they would like to ask? <laughs> all right. So I'll first hand go up. I was, yeah. And from seeing that, I see a lot of creative directors in the work that you do. I would just like to hear you talk about why design matters so much in comics. Why it's not just it's not just the drawing and <coughs> storytelling, but why design itself is so important. Before you answer that, I'm going to say I've been a part of new things he's cooking up in his head where he doesn't even talk about the idea or concepts. He will actually go, okay, but first. And he already, it's like it, his brain is there. Like he's already got the, the credits page in his head, which is fucking amazing. Yeah, I, th I think the goal is um, to make beautiful objects, right? Like that's, that's what I want to do. Like I want to make beautiful stuff. Um, you're not going to hit. Well, sure, sure. I mean, it all serves this. At the end of the day, I'm a storyteller, right? But I want to make beautiful objects that are storytelling containers, right? And so, in my opinion, um, from a design sense, it all has to work together. And I'm not saying it has to be homogenous, even though I do that sometimes because it, it helps with the branding, right? Um, also, my heart's with you still, still being in advertising. Um, <laughs> um, but I... I uh, no, I'm, it, it's one. It's not. It's not. Advertising is amazing, right? That's an amazing profession. The problem is the clients, right? Like they don't know what they need, and that sounds awful. But you know, you guys have seen Mad Men. They don't know how to sell their cigarettes, but God damn it, Don Draper does, right? Um, but I, I think I think the important thing is that I want to make beautiful objects that are storytelling containers and that the, everything inside of them needs to serve the story. And so that's just how I construct it. And I came in like really early on, like my very first Marvel gig was like Secret Warriors and I had all of these like, you know, hierarchies of who's in Leviathan and who's in Hydra and who's in S.H.I.E.L.D. and all this kind of stuff. And it blew the Marvel guys away and they didn't know what to do with it. But I knew that it was a different way to tell it give information that didn't, it also lets you make comics a little bit differently yeah. too. Like you know. I mean, yeah. if you look at your covers, your covers have a very design 
Well, we, we now, I've, I've won that fight so that we now have a budget for art directors mm -hmm. and people who can come in and do all of that kind of stuff. Like, we weren't going to have all of that on the X-Men books, but I, I hired Tom Muller by myself, and mm -hmm. then Marvel was like, you can't do that. And I was like, it is done. Then pay him, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. done. And they're like, but we, so, you know, but we have to maintain copyright and all that. And I was like, I was like this is a problem that I, uh, you know, Hope you can solve. So, <laughs> well anyway, said. Thanks. All right, we got another question. Hey there, my name's Noah. This is um, for Scotty. What's happened with the Strange Academy comic? What's happened with it? It stopped coming out. Oh, it's coming back. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, it, Marvel's doing one of the Marvel things where they're like, last issue, next issue. <laughs> you know, like yeah, they paused it, and then I think the new number one. Uh, Megan, do we know what's the tentative date? August, September, something like that. It'll be back with the number one slash issue 19. Like, in my, you know, my computer, it says 19, but I think it's going to be a number one. And just so, one more thing. Yeah. Is there going to be a TV show? That is something I don't know. Um, if there is, that'll be cool. Uh, it's not anything that, that we've talked about right now. It's just been me and Umberto kind of having fun and, again, play and pretend together. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know about the TV show side of it, but it is definitely coming back. And the last, the, this next arc is going to be pretty big. It's going to be cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate Good it. Stuff. All right. Next question. Jonathan, what's been the most difficult part of the Three Worlds, Three Moons project? Um, no one knows what it is. It's really, really hard to explain to people. And um, I tried, I, I, I've tried to explain that it's watching us make a concept album, you know, is kind of what the, the premise is. Um, but, you know, people want comics, so we do some comics. But we're just now to the place where we're getting ready to do, like, our first ongoing and that kind of thing. So, um, I don't know. It's been weird. It's been weird. I, I think the experience for everybody has been weird. Uh, Mike and Mike are having the time of their lives, and the designs look amazing. Um, we just have to figure out, worst case scenario, we just start putting out comic books. You know, uh, best case scenario, we're putting out all the ancillary stuff and it's working with it at the same time, you know. The idea of, like, to have multimedia as well as part of that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the idea is to have executable intellectual, uh, intellectual property that we can do games of and video games and TV stuff and all, all of that. So it was built with all of that in mind. So, um, if we get there, we get there. If we don't, we'll make cool, cool comics. You know. I was just wondering, Jonathan, someone else from Florence, South Carolina, um, was there any? I don't live in Florence, South Carolina. That's a lie. Not, That's yeah, a lie. from I said from. Yeah. Is there any? Was there any uh, inherent difficulty in breaking into the industry in like a not metropolitan area? Um. Well, I did not break into comics until I was 35 years old, and that was only after I failed trying to get in as an artist for a decade. Like, I won the, I won the quick draw contest here in 1996 or something <laughs> like that. Um, I don't, do y'all even do the quick draw contest anymore? All right, anyway. So Jonathan's entering. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to lose again. It was my These fifth, kids are too good now. It was my fifth try. <laughs> um, uh, I, I just, I, I cold submitted to Image, you know, and I didn't know anyone in the industry. I mean, I knew, mm. knew no one. And so my first couple of years, I just had my head down and worked. And then I got invited to Marvel and met people through the retreats and all that kind of stuff. Right. I still don't know. Like when people talk about living in Portland or something like that, where it's like enclaves of comic book people, I don't know that that's entirely beneficial outside of networking, but, you know, um, if you make good books, yeah, you, you live you, anywhere. You, you'll be all yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Thank you. All right. Next question. Hi. This is a question for both of you. As someone who's trying to break out in the comic industry, what's your thought process going into a new series like? How do you start a new series? Oh man. Um, you take a hot shower. Yeah. Sometimes, actually. No. It really. I. What I do is I write. I have. Uh, you know, a note on my phone with just. Anytime something occurs to me that could be a potential seed for a new book, I just write the sentence down, you know, like blank. Oh, man, that'd be it. a lot of times what I I will watch something and it'll be this. But then I will question like, 
you know, this third tier character in that and be like, well, what's that guy? Like, what's that person's story? Right, sure. You know what I mean? Like, what is the story of the person, like the, you know, like, you know, what's, like, right now I'm working on something that, where the kid, the kid was like, what is, if you have a chosen one, and then that, you know, that's basically like winning the state championship. Uh, you know, Harry Potter wins the state championship, right? But what does that guy do when he's 40? He's Al Bundy, right? Like, <laughs> like he just keeps talking about winning state. Nobody gives a shit if you won state when 30 years ago, right? So, like, Harry Potter would be like, guys, I beat Voldemort. They're like, yeah, but you're a fucking clown now. Like, you work at a, you, he, like, sell shoes. Yeah, you, you scratch your balls on television now, right? Like, so, I think it's that. that. That's for example, like, I like, that's, but, and I just write that stuff down. And then when the schedule opens up, or like right now, Jorge and I are building our next project, it was like, let's go down the list. And, I don't like to think too far ahead because I might not be in that headspace when the schedule opens up. I'm very much like, where am, where am I at right now? So it's, but it's also different every time. Like sometimes it's real personal. Sometimes it's really surface level. I don't know. It's just random. Yeah. I think the question is, is how do you know if something's a good enough project to make a book out of? Right. right. Um, and I think that that's a, that's a kind of tiered thing. Like I have ideas all day long. Yeah. Right. Like, and I have one of these, I have one of these new comics, dot txt files on my on my laptop and it's it's probably if you print it out it's probably 100 pages at this point point. Right. and it's insane stuff like I, I i looked at it the other day and i have like in all caps bolded exclamation point exclamation point planned obsolescence <laughs> nothing else just yeah. that yeah. and i'm like that's not an idea. I don't know why Lori doesn't read his comics. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> but, but, but what happens is that you keep noodling on the ideas, and the ones that stick around, the, right. you, like the one, and, and so you think about it a little bit more, and you write a little bit of it, right? And you still, and, but you put it back away, and then the ones that you can't stop thinking about and you just have to keep writing, that's a book worth doing. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Good question. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Good shirt, Skull Chaser. Jake Parker, baby. Yeah. All right, give me your name, and then you uh, my name is Josh, and uh, kind of just want to geek out for a second. I'm a big fan of you guys. Thank two you. Two Substack subscriptions, and you guys are the two that I have. Oh, uh, thanks, brother. But yeah, Jake Parker's been helping me out. I he's, do Zoom Hangouts. He's been trying to help me level up with my heart. He's amazing. Amazing guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, I kind of picking back off that last question, where when you're kind of starting out and you're like, all right, I need to stop just doodling. I need to plan a comic that I can just dive into and learn along the way. Right. How do you pick one of those hundreds of ideas that you might have and be like, this is the one that's going to be my like intro? I will, I will speak to this because I, Jonathan watched me go through this process, you know, having drawn comics for so long and then starting to write here and there and then deciding to write my own thing and move on. I struggled with that a lot because I thought, man, I have this huge hill to climb. Like, I've got to prove, you know, like, I'm not just an artist. I also am a genius. Writer. But I don't know that. Like, you're just like, and so once I let that go, my philosophy now is whichever one you have, like Jonathan said, whichever one you can't let go of, just do it. But remember, you've got more time to do the others. Like, it's it's the being too obsessed with one and thinking that's the it is what hobbles you because you stop thinking about you won't walk anymore. You won't. You won't go forward anymore. To to get you just stay there and go like, which one's the best? Let's do nothing. But what you really want to do is go like, this one's the best right now. Let's do it. It might work. It might not. And then I'll do the next one. And then I'll do the next one. And once you get that inertia, that it 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 starts to just go. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, I'm 20 books later. Like, it, it's not making. My number one rule in life is not to be precious. Just don't be precious about anything. Just treat it like it's this week and we'll see what happens next week or this month and we'll see what happens next month. But the number one thing to do what we do is do it. Make the comic. Yeah, you're an artist for primarily? Yeah, I started as an artist. Yeah, so <clears throat> you have such an incredible advantage because you don't have to... Like, you get to set yourself up. Like, if you're shitty at drawing cars, there's no cars in your book. Right, you don't have some writer putting in that there are cars in your book, like and the like. The beautiful thing about it is, is that this is a visual medium, so you're already winning if you're a decent artist, right? And so all you need to do is set yourself up to succeed. So whatever your concept is, it's the coolest, and you only draw pages that you know you can murder. You know, right. um, I would just dump. I would just jump into it, and then 
you know, as you're drawing the pages, it's okay to dialogue. It's okay to have a script, mm -hmm. but don't be afraid to just, as your head is taking you somewhere, just yeah, write the dialogue. Yeah, 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 just to just put the dialogue in the margin, you know, and that is how Mike Mignola does every single one oh, of his right. books. Yeah, like like it's um, <clears throat> and it's a visual medium, so you're yeah. ahead of the game. Just make a good book. Yeah, right. just whatever. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, one page, two page, ten page, whatever. Yeah, Middle West came just from. Just don't a, do five hundred pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Middle West came from a daily sketch. I do a sketch early in the morning each day, and I did a daily sketch of a kid talking to an old farmer, and the kid said, uh, you don't look like a wizard. Like, and I drew the drawing. I didn't know what I was going to have the, the people say. I just drew a kid looking at a farmer holding a rake. And then I was like, okay, what are they going to say? And the kid, and I was like, oh, ooh, you don't look like a wizard. And the farmer says, what's a wizard look like? And then Middle West came from that. So it's like, yep. that's the beauty of comics, man. There's no wall. There's no hurdles. There's no gatekeepers. It's just whatever. We're like the last medium besides maybe music. But I mean, that's it's still just such a different storytelling art form. We're the last ones to tell like fully narrative storytelling where you can do it by yourself in a room with pencil or a computer or whatever yep. and then share it with the world instantly. It's, it's great. So yeah, don't have any rules. Just run at you know, just, just get it. Great answer. Thanks, man. Good great question. question. Man. Thank you. All right. Give us your name and your question. Um, Tom, a huge fan of both of you. Uh, this is mostly for Sky. Um, recently, um, after several years of like after leaving a wave of destruction and death, why did you decide to bring I Hate Fairyland back? Into you know, I just I, I just miss it. Like I never intended to uh, end it and then never come back. I didn't even say it. I think in the, I did. I wrote a piece in the back of the last issue of, of Twenty and said, "Hey, this is just the ending for now because I just needed to rest, you know, like and and take a break and a breather and see, you know, and you know, I still had very young. My my youngest son was very young when Fairyland was still going, um, so I always intended to bring it back. And you know, after so long of being away, um, I don't know. I just started itching, and then there was a couple artists that I really dug, and then. Then, you know, we decided to do the untold tale stuff and I got a lot of other cartoons. So it really was just like I missed it. I missed I missed that bombastic free form. I can be inspired by like, oh, man, Pacific Rim was wacky. I'm going to do a freaking kaiju issue. You know, like uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of book I can do that with. And I missed that kind of instantaneous kind of grat gratifi gratification. Uh, just a quick question with Hickman. Um, Love the like run on X Men. Um, I noticed with X Men, it's it seems like they're all in one place now. Like, how do you keep track of like what characters are where? Because it seems like every issue of X Men, it's well, I mean, the previous volume was um, like almost a new team every week. How do you keep track of like who's where and doing what? Um, I, I mean, I guess you're talking about like my actual like X Men run. Yeah. Like one, yeah. I, that book shouldn't have been called X Men. Like it wasn't going to be called X Men. It was just going to be like stories of the yeah, X, mutant stories in the Marvel universe. And then we were going to wait and have an X Men team, which would have been Jerry's first that big book that Jerry did. So we would have taken the X Men off the shelf. But sales and marketing doesn't appreciate that in perspective. <laughs> that wasn't really an X Men. Title. It yeah, no, it, it absolutely it wasn't meant to be an X Men title. But. Um, <clears throat> Um, how do I keep track of it? I, I just wrote what I wanted to every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wish Thanks, I man. Good thank questions, you, brother. You. All right, we got two more. Give me your name and question. I'm Kevin, and this is for Mr. Hickman. Uh, we know that Kevin Feige and the Marvel Studios people use your creation for Infinity War. I just was curious about what was it like? Uh, were you asked to consult, or are there any cool behind-the-scenes stories about pre-production or anything like that? When they use your stuff, did they send you a car? Oh, yeah, like a Matchbox car, though. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's really bifurcated. Like, we don't get in with those guys or anything like that. I mean, I do stuff in L.A. and all that, but, um, I, you know, it's cool when it shows up there. My kid thinks it's cool, which makes me feel good about it, right? Like, my kid thinks, um, thinks I don't suck entirely, which is good. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I... I I think it's I think it's great. Yeah. I mean I I mean I'm super happy that Marvel's the biggest entertainment brand in the world, and that I get to work there. Um, you know, I mean all the stuff about our creators fairly compensated and all of that. You know, I'm sure. 
I, I agree, I guess, right. with that. For right? sure, yeah. Um, but I feel, I, I feel like um, I'm appreciated and taken care of for the most part. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens when they bring Fantastic Four stuff in there. They better yeah. not use that Mark yeah. Wade shit. Is what <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All yeah. right. Last yeah. question, gents. All right, give me a name and your question. Uh, yeah, my name is Kelsey. Uh, this is a question for Scotty, but it could be either one. So mm -hmm. they had mentioned the, you know, returning of Fairyland uh -huh. and stuff like that. Is it hard to give up, like, full control over that where you're, you know, doing the writing and the art and then bringing in other artists? Um, right. Is that, you know, difficult to, like, pass that off? And would you want to still be doing it, even though it's exhausting, obviously? Yeah. Uh, I, th I always thought it was going to be, but I've been really lucky. Um, I've been lucky since I, because of when I chose to s start writing, I also, I've been in a place in the industry where I get to choose who that is that works with me. And one of the great things, and, and Jonathan's been lucky in this realm as well, is like when you're an artist, you understand art. You understand how to, you understand. It, uh, when I work with Nick Klein, on sure. Deadpool. Yeah. Uh, I've been friends with Nick Klein for a lot of, very long time, so all I did was I go, I buy, you know, I get three of my Nick Klein trades off the shelf, and I just flip pages like this. I don't even read it, I just am looking. And it's almost like a, like a computer where I'm like, cool, okay, he likes, he likes to do three medium shots and then this, yep. and then he likes to do this, he doesn't do that many down shots, he does this, or whatever, right? Yeah. And then you just lock all that in, and so when you're writing, you give him, you start thinking about what he's, what he dunks on, and then also like, okay, I'd also like to see him, let's see if he can add an extra, an extra spin before that dunk, and challenge him a little bit. But always give him room, uh, that's my favorite part. So because I've had control over who I work with, I've never had a problem with handing it over. I'm more excited, because to me, I've always said it, to me, once I got on the writing side, it was the first time I ever felt like I was actually collaborating. Now, I, and I don't want that, that sounds like a diss to the writers that I've worked with, but as the artist, you're like, they've already went off. They're, they're well ahead of you by the time it lands on my desk. So I don't feel like, I never felt like we were like making this together. It was just like, I'm doing it and you're off doing another thing. So I, the sense of, now I love the end product, but the sense of collaboration when people would be like, how is it collaborating? I'm like, I didn't. I just would be in a house by myself drawing words on a page. Um, as th with this, on my mo on my creator own stuff, um, we talk from the beginning, the conception of it to the very mm -hmm. end. So we are one the whole time. So I love getting Umberto Ramos. I mean, you have getting an Umberto Ramos pages in your email every day is it's like it's fucking amazing. <laughs> that dude is that dude's like you know in his late 40s, he's been in this business 35 years, he's still drawing like he needs dinner tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like he's still, he draws like he's still trying to prove that he needs to be able to break in. And when you see that, you're like, I don't even get you. So to me, no, it's not about losing control. I don't lose control, I'm gaining a whole new appreciation for an industry that I've been in for 20 years. You know, I've been in it my entire adult life. No college, straight to this, and so, to be reinvigorated and falling back in love with this medium through a different lens and feeling like I'm learning again and I'm watching Jorge or you know or Kyle on Twig just like like whoa I didn't think of it like I wrote they're walking across a bridge and then Kyle draws this weird trippy ass bridge I'm like oh that's awesome I didn't think of that that's what it's like having like I would imagine having a jam band where you're just going out and you start playing and then all of a sudden yeah. so yeah for me I've never felt for a minute that I that I'm like oh, God, I wouldn't have done it like that I'm like man I'm so glad he did it like that he or she or whoever I'm working with yeah cool. and one other thing mm -hmm. just to follow up on that sure are we going to see any more uh Uncle Ewan uh variants on the series at all oh which, which oh, oh my gosh yeah. oh is that the, the I, painter I, I right uh, from, for a couple of those covers. They're incredible. He's like, amazing. Yeah, I need to reach back out to him. Pencils, I would love to see him. Get... He's talking about there's an artist in England who just did, like, just for fun, uh, one of his friends drew a uh, Gert for My Hate Fairyland, and he painted it. He's got this crazy, like, Bisley painting style. I haven't seen this. So for the variant covers, I, he doesn't, thanks for the support, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but for the variant covers. Yeah, I don't know who this person is. Yeah, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, it's you. Again, Ewing, I think. Yeah, it's like, it's but it's Ewing a, McLaughlin, I think right. is his name. And but, yeah, he, I would, would just send him pencils and he would bizly over it. Oh, nice. And, and it's just bonkers awesome. So, no, is I, it analog I, or is it? Yeah. 
actual painting on on paper. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, yeah, we'll probably reach out to cool. him for That'd a thing. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, right. man. Thanks. Great question. Good stuff. Thank you guys so much. Those were some fantastic questions. Uh, thank you guys so much for showing up to this panel. I think there's another one um, right after this one. But before we do that, let's give it up one more time for our esteemed panel, Scotty Young, Jonathan Hickman. Thank you guys. You thank guys you. Fantastic. Thanks, guys.